an issue right now and I guess I'll share it with you guys I was gonna make a um a Kitty Speaks video for my beauty YouTube channel but I'll share it with you too so here's the here's the thing right I decided that I wanted to try to get something easy to do my hair with for um, my beauty channel videos. I don't wear wigs and, and things like that because of the lupus they kind of scrub out my hairline so my hairline is very important that I try to keep it as healthy as possible so wigs are kind of out of the question so I try to be as good as I can to my natural hair. Um, I try to keep it very very healthy and I do not heat style well today I purchased yesterday I purchased sorry yesterday I purchased this Remington clip clip the uh, ceramic clip heated clip setter and let me just tell you that this thing gets hot as a Dickens. I don't swear as a general rule, so it gets hot. It's, it's hot like a boss when I tell you it's hot. So, like, putting these little heated, heated clip setters in my hair, it's very, very easy. This particular one I'm going to have to exchange anyway because some of the clips were on the, um, the wrong rail and I turned it on for them to heat and a bunch of them got melted so I need to exchange it anyway but I promise you I was going to straight return it and get my money back because it is that hot so you've got these little heated um, rollers and it's really easy and your hair sets really fast and it was it was gorgeous it really really was but I slept on it <laughs> my life I spend too much of my life in the bed to be trying to save a hairstyle it's really just not gonna work um my hair was really really pretty and so I you know I put up I posted pictures on Instagram and everybody was like yes you better work to the gods and everybody was all like I don't know if they were talking about my face and my hair but let's be real if you want you know all of the the whole package has to be together and mine is usually not together because I usually wear my hair pulled back in a ponytail as a rule and so I posted this picture with the whole thing done with the hair and everything and everybody was just like oh my god I showed my boyfriend he was like who is that it was <laughs> but but I don't know so so I had this conversation with him and I'm like a oh, baby so you know how like here let me show you see this from this morning and how you liked it do you like it that much because it's really hot and this man said let me get you some gloves that's what he said so I guess I'm going to be using that with cotton kind of gloves <laughs> I guess it's, it's what's going to be going on in my life let me introduce y'all to my this is my little um that was like such an awful segue. That was so random. But I want to introduce y'all to my... This She holds my um, earrings. I got her at Bed Bath & Beyond. And I've had her so long that um, she a little broke down. But whatever. Let's do today's video. So the question is... How do you deal with being someone with chronic illnesses and taking care of your small children? I am going to be very honest with you and tell you that this is a question that I struggle with answering um, because this was a very sensitive subject for me personally. So instead of answering the question, I'm just going to share my struggle um, with you. I actually have been ill since the day that I was born. I was born with tumors that had to be surgically removed. Um, I ended up, I, I was diagnosed with spina bifida or something like that, like before I was even 18 months old and they wanted to do uh, back surgery on me like when I was an infant infant and my mother didn't allow it and then I had like pneumonia when I was like three and I literally have been ill my entire life 
Um, I actually got married very early and started my family. I've always wanted to be, when, when I was a child and everybody was deciding what they want to be when you want, want to grow up and, you know, little boys were saying fireman, I want to be a police officer, I want to be a teacher, you know, whatever. I wanted to be a, a, a mother. That's all I've ever wanted to be. I never had any career aspirations when I was a little girl. I literally wanted the white picket fence. I mean, and that's how I thought of it in my head. I wanted the white picket fence. I wanted to cook, bake cakes and cookies and pies and, and all these things. And I did those things when I was a young uh, mother. For a while, I was a stay-at-home mom. And it was my dream come true. Uh, I actually have four children. And I was told... Um, thankfully, after all four of my children were born, there's like a 10-year gap. My, uh, there's 10 years between my oldest child and my youngest child, so I guess it was 12 years I was, um, having children. And I got told after, you know, I had had my fourth child that if they had properly diagnosed me before I had children, they would have told me that I could never have children. That my health is that, you know complicated. I'll say it I'll say it that way. My health is that complicated. Um but I had a, a husband. I had I had support. But my husband was chemically dependent. So I didn't have the best support. And I can honestly tell you that my two oldest children for a a good portion of their um preteen and teenage years, they grew up taking care of me. You know, that you that, that's what they did. You know, they brought my meals, they brushed my teeth, they combed my hair. Um, so, th that having that bigger gap between my oldest and my youngest, you, I have two sets of children. I have two adult children and two teenage children. And right now, my teenage children live with my ex-husband because that is a better situation for my health. I currently don't take care of myself. I have a caregiver. My, excuse me, my boyfriend and I live together. He moved me into his home to take care of me. So I have a, a, um, a caregiver. But what was really important to me was that my youngest two children who are now teenagers didn't have to be my caregiver like their big sisters had to do. I really didn't want that for them. And let's just be clear, they are not happy with that. My my two youngest children, you know, want to be taking care of me. They want to be living with me. They don't care about my health and how, you know, it would complicate their lives. But I do, like, I understand because I didn't have a childhood. Because I grew up taking care of my brothers. I never got to be a kid. I understand sacrificing your childhood for your family and that is a choice that I want them to I know that they're making the choice willingly but I think that they're making the wrong choice and this is you know maybe something that they don't forgive me for when they get older I don't know but I hope that as they grow older they understand the reason why I'm making the choice that I'm making and how important it is to me for them to have a normal childhood. I do not want them having to be my caregiver. So I never really had the situation of who takes care of your young children because I had young children taking care of me. My young children are very uh, precocious. They're very mature. Um, they're all extremely intellectual and so you know this was not it, it's not as weird as it sounds like little kids bringing you you know um, they were just always extremely mature for for their ages whatever ages they were um, so it's not a situation that that I have had to go through because I had my kids being the other way around wanting to care for me instead of me trying to figure out how to get care for them and even though their father was chemically dependent, he was, um, you know, he did cook meals and change diapers and things like that. He did leave my children at daycare a few times, you know, let's, let's just be clear. There were situations where I had to choose my work and going to work and supporting my family above my health. That went on for a lot of years.
And so I've had complicated caregiving situations regarding my children just as, as you have. And so I'm not really able to answer that question intelligently. And so I thought what I would probably do instead was share with you my journey so that you know that it was just as difficult as what you're going through. I don't really have good suggestions um, because a lot of our life is complicated by finances, especially if you're in a situation where you can't work. It's not like you could just pick up some overtime to pay for a babysitter. So I don't want to be... Um, you know, I don't want to be telling you stuff that, that's not feasible. I can't think of the word that I want to use right now. Yeah, I have that problem too. I know you have that problem where you're trying to think of something and it's just like, you can't. So, I can't think of the word that I want to use, but, but I don't want to be that woman trying to tell you, you know, oh, well, why don't you just put them in daycare? That is really not feasible for a lot of us. And it's really insulting for people to say things like that to us because we're trying to figure out how to pay for our medication we're trying to p figure out how to pay for all of these hospital bills and all these doctor bills and then somebody say throw another bill on the pile that's not really feasible and if you don't have the type of family that is supportive that's willing to you know help out and pitch in with child care I don't really know that there is an intelligent solution that I could give us, a person in our situation where money is always going to be um, an issue, excuse me, I don't know that there is an intelligent solution to that type of problem. You know, how do you provide child care for your children when, you know, you're going through what you're going through? I mean, unless you think I got a magic pill, <laughs> I don't have any magic pills. I have the same problems that, that, that you have. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm paying a little bit every month on a whole bunch of hospital bills and a whole bunch of doctor bills. And I've got medications that, you know, I just honestly can't pay for just like you. And so I'm not going to tell you, you know, you know, put them in daycare or, or whatever. Like if, if so what I'm going to say, excuse me, so I can stop babbling. What I'm going to say is that uh, I would like for you guys to send in any solutions that you've had to your child care predicaments so that I can spread them to the masses because I don't know. I'm very comfortable saying I don't know. I'm not the type of person that's going to pretend like I'm more educated and more knowledgeable than I am. If I don't know something, absolutely, I'm going to say, I don't know. So, I don't know. So, please help. I'd like other Spoonies to commit to helping one another. Send in your solution so that I can tell everybody what ways you've worked out this issue. Because for me, I literally had to give up my children. I lost my children to my illness. You know, it was another sacrifice that, that I've had to make. I don't want to, you know, it's not a, a sacrifice that I would wish on anybody, but that's what I had to do. So, uh, obviously, not, that's not something that you want me to tell you when you, <laughs> when you wrote this question in to me. It's, you know, give them to another family member. So, uh, Spoonies, let's help each other. Let me know what, what solutions you've come up with. And until next time, love, peace, and hair grease. Ciao.